yeah, so the dust has settled on Newcastle United's 2-2 draw against West Ham on Sunday. And I think really, at the time I said, you would look at that probably in a couple of days' time as a good point. And I think, having looked back at the game, especially the first half, it probably does feel like a good point now, especially on the back of the run that Newcastle were on. Uh, great, a great run of results, really, especially after the, the Brighton game where things were looking a bit doubtful um, for Newcastle after you know losing three games in a row. The feedback that I've had from players in, in interviews in, in the last sort of few days is that they felt that the Brighton defeat, while it was disappointing, I think they felt that the reaction to it was a little bit over the top. Uh, certainly the performance in isolation wasn't very good, but I think since then, I think they've basically gone on this run, six or seven games where they really proved, um, they feel like they've had a point to prove, and I think that's exactly what they've done. And they've really hit the heights, especially when you're looking at that PSG game. I mean, that was, that was always going to be hard to to deliver again a second time uh, in the space of a few days going to West Ham uh, so to get a point again on the back of that I think the only disappointment from the West Ham game was you know they had it they had it pretty much won going in the last minute and then sadly weren't able to to hold on to that to that lead and an 89th minute equaliser is always going to drain you to an extent but as I say does settle now Newcastle still unbeaten going to the international break with a few injuries and they've got a chance now for players to rest up. People like Callum Wilson going into, into the game. And I think Newcastle now, uh, certainly they're a team, they're a team that I, I feared a little bit. I, I was walking through the West Ham fans uh, before the game actually on Sunday and I could overhear some of them talking about um, the threats that Newcastle have got. And Callum Wilson was one of the players that was mentioned. But because the West Ham fans are quite knowledgeable, they've done the research, they were talking about possibly carrying a bit of an injury. And I think had Callum Wilson been fully fit for that game, I think he, you know, he, he would have played a, a bigger part in it. Um, you can't argue with Isaac getting the two goals, but certainly Callum Wilson, when he's fit, uh, he's a real threat for Newcastle. And I think after the international break, you know, he's not with England this time, he'll come back and I think he'll be ready to go again. So Newcastle, Certainly a team that people are standing up and taking notice on it, it this season in the first part of it anyway. Yeah, another part of the sort of fallout or the aftermath, if you like, of West Ham was, you know, we spoke to Dan Byrne after the game uh, and he was, you know, he was asked directly uh, by myself. I just said, you know, you've, you've been name checked a couple of times now by Gareth Southgate and, you know, he keeps mentioning you in press conferences, but then not picking you. And I just, you know, asked... Dan Byrne, how he felt about that and you know he was totally honest about it very candid interview very typical of him saying look I I feel I've been playing well enough um, to play in national football and if you know the Premier League uh, form wasn't enough for Gareth Southgate then surely he's standing up and taking notice at AC Milan away drawing 0-0 doing a good defensive job good job for the team and certainly PSG at home where you're not only doing a good defensive job for the team against a very renowned front line, but also scoring a vital goal. And I think he was totally honest about how he felt about, you know, Gareth Southgate's decision not to pick him. And, you know, he was talking about other players in that position saying Luke Shaw and Ben Chilwell are technically better players than him. He admitted that himself. He said, but he felt he brings something to the team. Now, I'd argue that he's probably been a bit modest there. He brings more than just something to the team. He brings the physicality, he brings the presence. And yeah, I, I'm just completely staggered that Gareth Southgate didn't fancy a look at him. Uh, in particularly the experimental friendly against Australia. Okay, you could make a case for the Italy game. It's an important qualifier. You don't want to be trying new players. But certainly the, the Australia game, the friendly game on Friday at Wembley, say, like, come on, at least give him an opportunity. But again, uh, I've, I've said this about Gareth Southgate before. I've said it about Gareth Southgate before, that he's got a set opinion on the players that are going to take him forward to Germany this summer. And I don't think he's going to tweak anything. It feels like he's sticking with the majority of the group that he's had in the last couple of tournaments. So 
I think from that point of view, if you're Dan Byrne, you're going to struggle to get in. And that's really unfortunate because that for me says that players who are in form aren't getting picked. And I think that's what the England squad should be about, really. But it looks like Gareth Southgate's got his own plan. You certainly can't argue with the last two or three tournaments in terms of getting far in the competitions. But when they've had the opportunity to win, win something, um, they've, they've sadly not been able to do it at the last. But, you know, you look at these left-back options, Shaw and Chilwell are injured. So Dan Byrne can count himself very unlucky not to be even in that conversation uh, going into that game. So... That's England. There's probably a couple more players you could argue should have been in the squad. Anthony Gordon being another one, playing very well at the moment. Um, you know, Sean Longstaff's name has been mentioned as well. But ultimately, Gareth Southgate seems to be picking the players that he thinks is going to take him forward to this tournament next summer in Germany. Uh, thankfully, Kieran Trippier is one of those players. Um, but Gareth Southgate not really budging on, on anything, even when it comes to experimenting. It looks like it's going to take a real spate of injuries for any of the Newcastle players uh, to be involved in. So very interesting stuff from Dan Byrne after the game. Uh, we'll watch these next two England games, but you know from next week we're building back up to Crystal Palace uh, at home for Newcastle, by that which time Eddie Howe will hope uh, they've shaken off a few of those injuries. And also you've definitely got Anthony Gordon back for that one from suspension.